Hello! Our last several sections have looked at the microcontroller's hardware and how you can use the timer peripherals. In this section, we're going to take a step back into the software realm and look at the topic of functions. Functions are named independent pieces of software that are written to perform a task that can return a value. Let's take a look at what this means step by step. All functions in your program must have their own unique name. Your program will use this name to use the function. For example, you can have a function called turn off watchdog. The name of your functions must be unique. You can't have two different functions with the same name or your program won't know which one you want. Next, each function is expected to be an independent piece of software. The instructions in your function can be performed without interfering with the rest of your program. Each of these independent pieces of software is intended to perform a small, discrete task. For example, if you had a function called turn off watchdog, it would make sense that the only instructions in the function would be to disable the watchdog timer. Similarly, a function named initialize timer1 would contain all the instructions necessary to set up timer1 in your program. By keeping the size of each function small, they become modular building blocks for our programs that we can use again and again. We'll see examples of this reusability shortly. Finally, depending on how they are written, your function can output or return a value. For example, you could create a function called cubed that would take the cubed value of a number. Your function would take an input, for example 5, and it would return to you an output value, that is 5 times 5 times 5, or 125. However, not all functions need an output. For example, consider a function called turn off watchdog that disables the watchdog timer. At this point, it does not necessarily make sense for the function to have an output value to give your program after the watchdog is turned off. To get a better appreciation of how functions can make your programs easier to read, take a look at these two programs. Both perform the same task of toggling a red LED on and off. Which one do you think is easier to read? I'm guessing that you think the one on your right is more straightforward. It uses words that are much more intuitive. A year from now, you may forget exactly what P1DIR equals 0x01 means, but you will probably always be able to understand what make red LED output means. Now, let's look more closely at the program's functions we just saw. Here, we see the instructions executed by some of the functions. We will find that we can make our own programs easier to write by reusing functions we have previously developed. We can build our programs more robustly and more quickly once we start to use the library functions to build our programs. In the attached handout for this lesson, we will introduce how you can define a function, its different parts, and how they are used. We will also look at a number of different examples of how functions can make your program easier to read. The attached handout will also show us how good functions are really the building blocks of good programs. We think you will quickly see that functions are powerful tools in the C programming language that literally allow you to create a whole new C programming realm. As always, please let us know if you have any questions about the handouts as you go. Functions are very important. We want to make sure that you are comfortable with this topic as we move on. We hope to hear from you soon.